First, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. I appreciate you being here with us. We broadcast live every weekday right around 1 p.m. Pacific, and we are here with you right now. We get to have some great conversations on this show, including talking about how transportation could be changing for you. Are you tired of being stuck in traffic for your commute? Well, there's a company that thinks they might have a solution for that, and that is a flying car that could leap over the cars that are around you and do a lot more than that. A lot of things going on with this. Uh, I am joined right now by Jim Duchovny from Aleph Aeronautics. And uh, Jim, I want to say thank you very much for taking some time to talk to us today. I know you've been very busy. I've seen uh, reports about your vehicle. I've actually kind of followed it for the last couple of years. And uh, now there is a big milestone that just happened. But for everybody out there who's watching, can you tell us about your company and what it is you're trying to do? Yeah, thanks. Um, so yeah, what we're trying to do is exactly what you said. We're trying to relieve the, all the traffic problems which are happening in the world right now. We're trying to make the world move faster. Now, it's not a simple task. It's not going to be there tomorrow, even though we got like a limited airworthiness certification from FA right now, uh, which allows us to do more flight testing and some exhibition. There's still going to be some time until it's going. You're going to see it in uh, California, Oregon, London, anywhere like in mass. But that's going to take still some time. But the idea is we're making small steps, making sure that we relieve the traffic problem. Because the main idea is you have the road, right? And the road has a physical constraint. Every tw about every 20 years, the amount of cars you put through that road doubles. So imagine in 20 years, you're going to double the amount of cars through the road. That's obviously um, going to create a problem. Hence, we're trying to make sure the traffic moves up. It is actually, it's a long conversation, but it's actually safer and uh, more simpler in the air than on the ground. And like even looking at this here, where you're seeing a car, you know, there's, there's obviously been a, a rollover or something on the, on the road. This flying car is able to take, take off hop over it and hop right back onto the road. So that's part of the concept that you're looking for. Right, so this again, this is a simulation obviously. Right. Um, yeah. So yes, yeah. so one of the ideas is you're gonna have some kind of an obstacle, right? And again, we have to work through a whole lot of legal uh, issues still before this needs to happen and a lot of logistical issues, but yes, the main idea is you're gonna have some kind of an obstacle, whether it's a water obstacle, a bay for example, a mountain or a traffic obstacle. And what you want to do is you want to live through that obstacle. That's one of the use cases. Another use case is you go from point A to point B, you drive a little bit, you go up, you turn, um, as you can see in some of our animation, you turn into the biplane mode and you very fast um, go to your destination. So there's multiple modes as you can do it. You can drive, you can vertically take off and hop, what we call over uh, some kind of an obstacle, or you can go in airplane mode and get to your destination fast. Again, it's still going to take some time uh, for it to be in mass in cities. Right, and that and that makes sense for anything like this, any monumental change like this. You know, for flying vehicles, there's all the regulations that'll have to come with that. So, you know, speaking with that in mind, you know, knowing that there's those hurdles that'll happen down the road. Looking at the vehicle itself, can you tell us how this is constructed? Because I know it is all electric, from my understanding, which is a, a pretty major point of it. Um, how does it physically work? Sure. So imagine your regular car, right? Imagine your Toyota, Tesla, Ford, any kind of your regular car. Take away uh, the front and take away the trunk. Just leave the cabin, right? Now, in that space, uh, we take the engines and put four smaller engines in four wheels, right? Now you have uh, all the space left. In that space, which is left, you put distributed electric propulsion, which is an eight propeller speed controller uh, motor systems. That's what gets you lift up. With the lift up, and you can go forward, uh, this is the scenario which you see in front of you right now. Another important point is you need, uh, on one hand, solid. On the other hand, something which allows the airflow through on top, right? Like the place uh, before and uh, after the cabin. So they create a mesh, right? Something which sure. is on one hand is semi-solid, on the other hand allows airflow. This is what allows you to go forward. In the biplane mode, what happens is you go up, 
and one of the sides of the vehicle becomes the bot, uh, top wing and the other side becomes the bottom wing so it kind of turns but the driver does not turn the driver always sits like this this is this is a simulation which you see right now this is for um for the long commute again the reason you're seeing simulations and not the real thing is because we just received the again fa uh special limited special awards and certification so we're actually preparing the video which we hope to release soon of the real thing actually flying very close to the simulations which you see right now and so going back to one mentioned point that you mentioned right there as far as the driver stays you know upright the driver's not turning on their side so the cockpit or whatever you would call that uh, i guess in that mode rotates uh, along with the vehicle as the vehicle rotates so that way you're always staying straight up uh, it's easier to describe it if you think of a gimbal camera, you know, like when uh -huh. you move any way, but stays the same, same thing. It's easier to describe that the car rotates around the uh, driver and not the cabin. The cabin actually does not rotate. The driver always stays in the same place. Nothing doesn't move left or right. It's actually very stable. It's more stable than when you're flying in an airplane or helicopter, right? So driver is good. How do you envision this being placed on the roads? Now, uh, I guess walking through a lot of what you just said, you know, being used for commuting. So you're driving part of the way to work, then you hop into this, you go the rest of the way, land, continue on to work, or is it flying all the way to work and back? What is the actual, uh, you know, envisioned use case of this most commonly? Right, so this is exactly why it gives you all the flexibility, right? The power to do uh, almost anything. Keep in mind that we got a lot of questions, why do you need to drive at all? You need to drive that, for example, there is a bad weather, you have some obstacles above you for the takeoff, you need to take off somewhere else. So you drive whenever you need to drive. You're more than welcome to drive 100% of the way if you don't incur anything along the way, which uh, kind of stops your uh, regular commute. If you do, however, you're welcome to take off. At this point, you have two options. You either fly um, without transitioning to the uh, airplane mode, but in this way, you're very energy not efficient. You're kind of like a burning through your battery and through your energy. However, if you need to go long distance, you turn into the airplane mode and you fly and it will get you uh, more than 100 mile distance if you need to do that. So you would choose uh, an optimal scenario based on the road conditions uh, and based on your uh, origin and the destination. And that's about 100 miles. This is the technical part. We still have to work through all the legal part and everything like that, the handoff between the uh, ground infrastructure to the air infrastructure and, and so on. We're using existing infrastructures both on the ground and in the air today. They already exist. What does not really kind of exist, it, it exists in some way, but needs to be worked out through, is the handoff between the ground and the air. And that's part of what the testing is that you just got approved for? Is, is that correct? The testing is more on the technical side. Again, on the technical side, again, we, we've been doing some testing in a kind of a more controlled environment. This allows us to do testing in a much bigger environment right now. It's not the technical thing which is interesting here because we've done everything I just said. Everything I just said, we've already, uh, we already done on a real full size. It's uh, logistics and the legal part which needs to be worked out with different authorities. We want to make sure it's safe. We want to make sure that everybody's happy, um, that it's a, it's a kind of transportation which helps people, makes people happy, and at the same time does not bother other people. Uh, what uh, I think a common question that people might have, too, is, you know, again, uh, ignoring some of the logistical hurdles as far as regulations and all of that, setting that aside for a second, just as far as the technical side of things. What happens if you run out of battery or something malfunctions while you're flying? What kind of safety mechanisms are there? Sure. So first of all, there's um, the reason I'm saying we're trying to make it safer than helicopters and airplanes today. There's a lot of redundancy. So first of all, remember I mentioned eight uh, distributed electric propulsion. It's independent. One engine goes out, two engines goes out, three engines goes out. You still have ways to go. So it's much more... Um, uh, safer in that aspect than uh, modern helicopters or airplanes. Also, if you're going to have like not enough um, energy, for example, to get to your destination, there are systems which will prevent it and will try to land for you. The 
something which is just psychologically mostly, but it's for people to feel safer. Uh, yes, there are ballistic parachutes in the worst case scenario. Nothing is going to happen to you. So again, what we're trying to do, we're trying to make sure it's safer than almost any kind of like mode of transportation, which you thought like helicopter, airplane, and in some cases, cars on the ground, right? This is what we're trying to work for. A lot of safety features. We actually safety started with the drawing on a napkin in a coffee shop when we started talking about the design. This is why there's so many safety features and the redundancy not only within the system, but between the systems. So we're trying to make sure it's actually safer than something which we use today. How many years out do you think we are before this is really widely adopted, this form of transportation by the public in general? Widely adopted, it's a good addition to that uh, sentence. Um, that all depends. So I want to give, I always try trying to give shout out to FA because everybody thought they're going to move much slower. They're doing an incredible job considering how few people they have, you know, all the problems with uh, everybody trying to fly during the Independence Day. Considering how few people they have, they're doing an incredible job and moving at an incredible pace. Um, so it's actually maybe sooner than you think. Um, in mass, I would not want to put the number because like people keep me squatting me. I'm telling the number is a complete, complete guess. And then people quoting me that he said that in 2025, you're going to have like your deliveries of every single vehicle. But I think it's actually going to be faster than people think. It's actually going to be sooner than people think. It might be actually faster outside U.S. than in U.S. Because FA is very strict and for good reasons. They have an incredible safety record. But that being said, the pace at which they move, you're going to say it should be saved pretty soon. Like way sooner than you think. Way sooner. How exciting is this for you being being working on this project? You know, going from drawing something in a in a restaurant to to now, you know, getting an FAA approval for, for testing. Right. You have to understand that yes, it's it's excitement which drives us, but being a startup um, and solving it keep in mind, people try to solve this technical challenge for hundred years. It's an incredibly technically challenging problem. It may look simple from outside. It may look simple uh, the way I described how it works. It's incredibly challenging technically. It's incredibly challenging legally. And it's, the business uh, is also not simple. So yes, on one hand, it's very exciting. For example, um, my father, he was a famous, um, Leonid Dukovny, he was a famous musician and the famous um, scientist. Part of what he did was in a, um, in a spaceships. And he gave the love of science fiction, right? He gave science fiction. Same thing as my partners, right? My co-founders, the technical co-founders who actually did it. Uh, Oleg uh, Petrov, uh, Konstantin Pisley, and Pavel Martin. They're the people who actually did it. I'm more on the business marketing regular side. They're the people who created the flying car. It's incredibly challenging for them. They're actually sleeping at the, on the board. They don't have time to go home. So yes, it's incredibly exciting. Yes, we're trying to change the world, but it's incredibly challenging at the same time. Well, it definitely is exciting to see any kind of innovation and change in something like this and the idea of a shorter commute and being able to fly over other cars. I mean, I'm all for that. So there's a, there's a lot, a lot to be excited uh, for with this. And, you know, I, I thank you for taking some time. I know you're very busy. I've been seeing there's a lot of people that are very interested in this naturally. I mean, it's really pretty cool product, uh, pretty cool, exciting concept anyway, and we'll see where it goes from there. But uh, Jim, thank you for joining us. Thanks for being here on the show. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you for hosting. And thanks, everybody, for being here as part of Fox 12 Now. Again, I'm Greg Nibbler. Uh, we get to talk about all kinds of things on this show, whether it's interviews, deeper dives, or uh, a lot of stuff in that right there, talking about a flying car. Uh, coming up next, we're going to have Eric G. from Around the House Northwest. So if you're watching live, come right back here to whatever platform you're on. If you're watching this on replay, you're probably watching on our YouTube channel. You can check out all of our videos right there as well. And I'm uh, going to step off here for just a minute. I'll be right back on here in a few. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.